But this morning, I, I wanted to kind of switch up a little bit of the devotion uh, because I think uh, what Solomon's talking to us about in the rest of chapter 11, just a few selected verses, um, really re, 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 um, necessitates a response in, in song. You know, so many times we kind of have the order of our services where the worship is always, or the expression of worship through song is always done in the front end, and then on, then after that is the message, et cetera. But I, I really believe that a lot of times we, we get it wrong because we get in a system and we have to have that. But so many times the Word of God necessitates a response to Him in worship. And, and that's really what I had this morning as I prayed through these verses and did some examination in my own heart and uh, in particular area that we're going to look at this morning. Um, I had to think, you know, really, where where does my uh, where does my hope lie? Uh, does my hope lie to make it very clear? Does my hope lie in uh, or my satisfaction, uh, whatever word you might want to put to that? My contentment does it lie in my possessions, my wealth, what I might be able to attain in this world, accumulate, or does does it lie in the Lord? In other words. Is, is he more precious to me than anything else I might ever possess? And I, 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 by the by, the Holy Spirit this morning, I recognized and realized that I had some priorities wrong in that, um, and I had to just really confess that and ask the Lord to to change my heart. Uh, Jesus said, "Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also." And it's so easy to to have our hearts bent towards things. And, and, and not recognize the, the fullness of joy that, that is in him. And so Solomon speaks of that in Proverbs chapter 11 today when he talks about riches or he talks about wealth. And he's specifically talking about material wealth. And, and of course, we know riches are far beyond uh, what we might gain materially, uh, but we live in a material world. And our sustenance depends on material possessions. It really does. I mean, you, if you don't have money, you can't eat. You can't pay your electric bill. You can't, all of those kinds of things. So we need the resources of life. But Solomon encourages not, us not to place our heart in those resources. And I think if we were all honest, there are many times that we find our hope or our confidence resting in the balance of our checkbook rather than uh, what God's, uh, God's goodness is. And so he says in verse 18, he says, the wicked, now remember, he's talking, uh, contrasting a lot between the wicked and the righteous, and I'm not going to rehash what those two things are, but he says in, in verse 18, the wicked earns deceptive wages, but one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. And so the wicked, through deceptive wages, um, he earns. Through de there's deceit there. There's crookedness. There's, there's the cheating of others. There's the withholding from others for himself. And he says the wicked earns <coughs> deceptive wages, meaning they fool. They, they don't last forever. He's deceived into thinking that they are the wages that are, that are good and are going to bring value. <coughs> Excuse me going to bring uh, happiness, but the one who sows righteousness sh uh, gets a sure reward. Then in verse 24, he says, one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Uh, so the righteous, you might compare, is the one who gives freely. Now, not flippantly and not without any Due, due diligence or process in that. But the one who gives freely uh, grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. My mind immediately went to Paul's writing in the, Gala in the book of Galatians as he's writing to that church. And, and we find this principle all throughout Scripture. And that is the principle of sowing and reaping. Let me read you what Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. He says, One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Now, here in context, Paul's talking about making provision for those who, who teach the word of God. We, we might call it the income for the, uh, 
uh, for the for the church leaders, uh, and and I want to be careful that I don't make this about me at all. But there's the principle here uh, that uh, that we're to give, so the one that teaches uh, their needs are met. Verse seven, he says, "Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption." But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are in the household of faith. Now let's apply this in a general principle, that the one who has a benevolent heart, the one who sees a need, uh, that one is really in need and freely gives to help that person. There's a principle in Scripture that if we sow that, then we'll also reap. Now, the motive is not to give so that we give back, but God blesses that heart of giving. And really, when I th when I really think about the heart of giving, what it comes down to, um, as I look at Scripture, it comes down to an act of faith that we trust God for our provision. And when our trust lies in Him, we trust that he will provide as a blessing to how we bless others. And it's just a principle that, that, that it's a kingdom principle. that's very opposite of the world. The world says uh, accumulate all you can for yourself um, or maybe for an inheritance for your children. There's not a bad principle in that. Uh, but the world says hold on to it for yourself. But God says, no, my, my kingdom principle is very different. That if you give uh, to, to meet those with the right heart, that I will bless that and it'll come back to you. And so that's really what Solomon is saying here, that one gives freely, grows richer, and another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Then he says in verse 26, the people curse him who holds back grain, but a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. When I lived in South Florida, we... Uh, we lived through three hurricanes down there. And as you can imagine, gasoline was the first thing that people needed after a hurricane, that and, and water or ice. And there was a thing that would happen down there that the gas station owners would have plenty of tanks of gasoline, but they would begin to withhold it. And so the demand was great, but they fixed the the numbers, so to speak, and the, and the supply was very limited. And they would begin to price gouge. What would be $4 a gallon normally all of a sudden was $8 a gallon. And they, they were holding back what they had. Well, here's the same principle, the one who holds back grain, a different commodity in that day than what we might have today. And so he warns here that the people curse him who holds back grain. He would be holding it back to inflate the number, the, the amount that it was worth, so that he would gain riches from that. And here God says, that's just not good. Thank goodness we, we uh, have laws that were enacted after that first hurricane that, that we went through, uh, price gouging laws uh, that kept that. But there's a blessing on the head of him who sells it. There's a blessing on the head of the person who knows and realizes there's a shortage in that, but there are people in need, and he's going to go ahead and sell it rather than withhold it. Now, some might say, well, he should just give it away. Well, maybe the Lord would lead him in certain instances to do that, um, but there's nothing wrong with selling a product. We find that principle all throughout Scripture. Uh, if somebody says they're going to give you something free and they're not making any money on it, they're probably not going to be in business later to service it when it fails. And so there's nothing wrong with a, um, with a reasonable profit on products. Uh, that's, what, that's what keeps that person in business. So here the principle is, though, not withholding when there's a need so that you can gain by inflated prices. That's a wicked person. Then in verse 28, he says this, Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. Why is it that if one who trusts in his riches will fall? Well, the truth is, sooner or later, those riches will vanish away. 
that it, in the scheme of life, what we possess in this earth really does not matter in, in eternity. And you've heard the saying that you've never seen a U-Haul uh, attached to a hearse as it's going down the road. What we gain in this life, we can't take with us into the next. And if our hope is placed on those things for security, and particularly for eternal security, our hope is, is not based on anything that will last. The only hope that we have in this world and the only hope that we have for all of eternity is in God through his son, Jesus Christ. And so as I reflected this morning on those principles that Solomon gives us in chapter 11, I really had to evaluate, God, um, is my contentment found in you or is my contentment found in riches? Um, is my hope found in you or is my hope found in what I have and what I possess? And do I trust God in the principles that he gives here that if I give, then I receive?